Tiffany Ashton with Clint Essentials. I'm a clinical research professional with over 18 years experience within the industry. I got my start as a clinical research coordinator and through the years I've been a CRA, a CTM, and also a project manager. So today I'm going to talk to my CRAs and give a few bare minimum items that you have to check within the regulatory binder if you are running low on time. So let's just talk about your monitoring day. So you've been on site, maybe you've been on site for about seven and a half um, hours at this point, and you've been reviewing source documents, medical records, confirming eligibility, you had to look at a few SAEs, you were gonna do some drug accountability on the last two visits uh, that occurred for a couple of your patients, and then it dawned on you, oh no, the regulatory binder. I forgot to take a look at that. And that's okay, we've all been there before where we've just been in many different areas of our day and we just realized, oh, I didn't even give any attention to the regulatory binder. So I'm here to share a few tips with you. These are the bare minimum items to look at. Now, I do wanna give you a disclaimer. It's better to look at the regulatory binder partially to do these bare minimum items versus leaving the regulatory binder alone and not looking at it at all during your visit. So these tips are for the partial visit, um, I mean the partial review of the regulatory binder, but do make sure during your next visit on site in about four to six weeks or whatever the interval is per your monitoring plan, that you allow enough time to go ahead and do a full review of your regulatory binder. So you do wanna make sure that you do get a full review as soon as you can. And also during this current visit, when you're doing your partial review, make sure within your, um, your trip report, you notate that you did a partial review and also note the sections that you reviewed because you wanna make sure that your manager is aware that due to um, time limitations, you weren't able to do a full review, you did a partial review of these key sections. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first you wanna pull your regulatory binder and you wanna make sure you sign the visit log and that's gonna show that you were there. And then you may want to use one of your CRA audit notes to flag, I'll just use a brand new one, um, this one says please complete and signature and this is a flag for your study coordinator to show them that they need to countersign your site visit log to make sure um, that it proves that you were on site that day. Next, you want to check for current IRB slash EC approval at the site and make sure the current informed consent form is being utilized by your patient. Sometimes there's a protocol amendment and there's a new informed consent form and the new informed consent form is in the regulatory binder, but it's not being used uh, with the patients and um, the patients are not being reconsented. So you do wanna do that bare minimum check. Check the IRB approval. Do the, does the site still have IRB approval to participate on the study? Check the current ICF. Is it still current and is that what you have been seeing and, and you're monitoring for the day? You just want to do that quick check just to make sure that there's no discrepancies there. Then you also want to check the delegation log. Has there been any new staff? Um, if so, check the training log. If there's a new investigator, you want to check the medical uh, license is filed, the CV, the financial disclosure form, and the 1572 has been updated. If it's a new um, coordinator, you wanna make sure that the GCP certificate is, is there, the CV is there um, as well. So you wanna make sure those things are filed. So there's just a few documents that you, core documents that you need to check if there's been any staff changes. And also make sure that that investigator has a GCP certificate as well. You wanna check for any other study specific documents such as the blinding, like a site specific blinding plan, if it's an unblinded uh, study, just to make sure there's no changes there. 
And then you want to make sure your confirmation letter for the current visit and your follow-up letter from the last visit has been filed. So these are just some of the bare minimum. You know, definitely take a look at your uh, monitoring plan. There may be other bare minimum items highlighted that you have to check no matter what at the site. But this is something to help guide you if you're in, cr in a crunch time and you're like, I got to look at my reg binder. What should I focus on? And during this time, make sure you're using your CRA audit notes because they are very helpful in streamlining your efficiency and making you more efficient in less time. Um, so for instance, if you need to do please reconcile or please clarify or even this please complete, these are so um, helpful over and above these yellow sticky notes. So let me show you. If you have a site delegation log that is blank and you will use this please complete, you say please complete the signature or you could just say please complete entire page. And you, let, you leave it there and you flag it for your study coordinator. Now, if you were to just write that out, please complete, and don't forget, you have to write legibly. And so that's why the CRA audit notes are helpful because they help you be, uh, because they are pre-printed. Please complete entire page. And so I'm doing so much more writing when I'm using the yellow sticky notes. So imagine you're short on time and you're like, oh my God, I got to write here. And you have to say, please clarify if delegated to AE review, and this is for an investigator, and I see, I mean, inclusion, exclusion criteria. You see how much writing I'm doing with this yellow sticky note? Now, if I use this, please clarify, please preprint it. It is, um, I say, please clarify if delegated AE review. And that's it. That one went way quicker than writing it out. Now, let's look at the difference. Your study coordinators and regulatory specialists are going to love you. They're going to love you at the end of the visit because look at this. Look how this looks. They have yellow sticky notes. It's sticking up, but then they have, you have these color coded ones, this please complete, it's orange, and this please clarify, it is mustard. And that's so, this is very helpful for them. And they're just able to pick up, oh, I need to please complete, please clarify, versus them having to open this up and go to this page and say, okay, what does this say? Okay, and what does this say? So that's why the CRA audit notes are very helpful when you're in a time crunch, because you wanna make sure that you're maximizing your time on site and using all available tools that you can. So don't forget for regulatory review, the CRA audit notes are just as great. Do the please complete, please reconcile, please file, um, this one is, actually this is please clarify, this is please complete prior to the next visit over the yellow sticky notes, which you have to do a lot more writing. So I hope those tips were helpful. Please be sure to like and subscribe and we will see you during our next visit video. Thank you.